you know, my, my full-time job is I'm a senior researcher at Microsoft Research based here in New England, and I work at the intersection of AI and biology. And today I'm going to share with you a little bit about how we at Microsoft Research are bringing this vision to life of how we can develop new AI systems towards this vision of precision medicine and precision health. Now, our work is really fundamentally grounded in the fact and the realization that human life is a marvel. On the one hand, incredibly robust, and on the other, incredibly delicate. And yet, it all seems to work together in concert. Now, to me, the most amazing thing about this all is that we all have different histories, different genetic makeups, different bodies. And yet, seemingly, our bodies are able to work together in this sort of magical way without sacrificing those differences that make you, you, and me, me. And yet, shockingly, in medicine today, by and large, these nuanced differences are not taken into account. People are treated as averages, as instances in a population. And so I'd argue that to really think about how we can personalize and make medicine more precise and tailored, we don't just need a better way to detect disease or discover new drugs. I'd argue that we need a whole new way of thinking, a way to leverage data about the human body and about biology and learn those patterns naturally and intrinsically through the use and development of powerful tools like AI. Now, we're all here because it's no secret that AI is truly revolutionizing our world. But today, the fact remains that the most powerful AI systems out there are those that are trained on natural human language, words, text. And yet, in biology, biology stores an incredible richness and language and scale of data within each and every one of us that gives us the opportunity to now envision how we can develop new AI to learn and unlock this natural biological language. And that's exactly one of our unifying visions at Microsoft Research, where we're building new AI systems towards this vision of personalizing medicine to be able to discover the underlying biological mechanisms of disease, to design new therapies, and ultimately be able to take those systems and models that we develop and deploy them robustly and safely into the real world in a way that protects data and actually realizes hopefully true clinical benefit. Now, to make this more concrete and to show you why this matters, let's go through one example, specifically in the context of cancer. 40% of the population in the United States will, is likely to develop cancer in their lifetime. And while we've known for a while that cancer is driven by fundamental biological changes in our cells, we yet lack the ability to take the understanding of these changes and condition therapies in a personalized manner that's going to be effective for all cancer patients. Of the patients that develop cancer today, there exists what we call targeted therapies for about 40% of those patients. And these are drugs that are designed to be specific to specific DNA alterations in the genomes of those cancer cells. But what is really scary and what is really shocking is that of those patients for which targeted therapies exist, less than 5% will actually realize lasting benefits and real benefits that can be counted as clinical successes. So clearly there's a problem and clearly we're failing. Why and how can we start to think about this? Well, I started off by saying we have this incredible richness and complexity within each and every one of us. But the way that we deliver these cancer treatments is based on an ad hoc reductionist way, where that individual is now treated as an instance in a population. And treatments are assigned based on an average benefit seen over large scale population studies. To make this even more concrete, when I'm talking about the scale and complexity of data, let's walk through a back of the envelope estimate to get at a sense of the scale of data that we can generate and that we could begin to consider for training AI models here. If we think about one cancer patient and one biopsy from a tumor from that single cancer patient, 
with the tools and technologies that we have today across different scales of biological information, from mutations in the tumor DNA to the interactions of cells with each other and their environment, we can generate on the order of 50 million individual data points for just that one biopsy from one single cancer patient. Now, when I think about this as an AI researcher, I see tremendous opportunity in this complexity. And as a biologist, I see power that comes with the ability to understand biology in a way that we can have never realized before. And if we bring these together, this ability to directly measure and think about biology at its natural scale as it's occurring, and our ability to learn patterns through tools like AI, this really gives us the best of both worlds. And so today I'll give you a glimpse of two concrete ways that we're doing this in our group at Microsoft Research. The first is through a very close partnership with the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, where we are seeking to bring this vision of closing the loop on precision oncology to life by putting AI front and center, where we've developed a partnership that allows us to take those molecular measurements from cancer patients, use them as data to train our AI models, and actually suggest new experiments, personalized experiments, that will allow us to model the biology of those patients' cancers in a personalized way. This gives us a platform and a closed loop flywheel to now generate new data that can refine our AI models to now produce treatment recommendations for that patient, which we can then test in the lab in a personalized way and hopefully make suggestions to move forward towards clinical practice. Now, obviously, there are a lot of steps to this pipeline. But if we think about just one piece, how can we actually design those new molecular treatments effectively? We also have very active work in this line where we are developing new generative AI models to actually do functional therapeutic design for molecules like proteins. And here we've built a new generative AI model that we call EvoDiff that has learned over the scale of evolutionary data from the world of biology, looking at sequences and information from over 50 million unique protein sequences seen in nature, and then learns and is trained on this information to now produce newly designed proteins that can meet particular functional specifications or functional constraints. We can see this idea come to life in this example here, where I'm showing you an example of one protein. And in green, I've highlighted a specific part of that protein that performs its function. Our model EvoDiff can take the input of that part of that protein as a sort of a biological prompt and now design a brand new sequence around that protein step by step from the bottom up. And what is beautiful about this is that this gives us a way to do this sort of biological prompting to design new proteins that can meet functional goals. And we're now taking some of these designs from our generative AI model and actually testing them experimentally in the real world to see that function come to life. Now, the ability to design new molecules and proteins is just the beginning to really realize this vision of unlocking the power and language of biology we need to be able to reason across these scales and across these different modalities that biological and clinical data can give us. And this is just the beginning of how we are realizing this foundation to hopefully bring this vision of personalized medicine to life. Thank you.